Politics and religion are dividing the world like never before, right now. Nation after nation after nation is experiencing political tensions, religious tensions. The world seems to be going crazy. Kate and I have the privilege of being friends with Pastor JT Thomas, and God has anointed him and equipped him with amazing wisdom to be able to bring healing to our divisions and bring heaven's power to bring unity right now in the midst of all the challenges that we face. What an honor it is today, Kate, to have the founder and the leader of the Civil Righteousness Movement, Pastor JT. <laughs> so good to have you with us. So glad to be here. Such an honor. Wow. And you're here as a speaker at our Overflow Conference, our annual Catch the Fire Overflow Conference, which is an amazing conference and already got off to a ridiculous start with the glory of God mm -hmm. pouring in. And you yes. have just done an amazing session that's wow. completely wrecked us. Hasn't oh, it? totally. Revelation exploding. Wow. You have got to listen to that message. And um, we've got the honor of having JT right here with us um, just to talk about some of those things that were just exploding in our minds this morning. You're yeah. so welcome. Pastor JT, you know, before we get into all of the things that you've been, you know, that you're just burning with at the moment that I know our, our yeah. viewers and listeners will just be so excited to hear. You've just recently uh, moved to Portland. Yeah, well, we, we technically still live in St. Louis, Missouri. We oh, live, you do? Okay. Yeah, we live gotcha. in um, a suburb of St. Louis called Ferguson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the Lord opened the door for us to partner with, with what he's doing in Portland, Oregon, through both the Big C Church, the Body of Christ yeah. in Portland, and a localized expression there called mm. Bridgetown Church. So wow. um, technically, I'm considered the justice and mercy fellow or the pastor Ooh. in residence mm. and i'm doing this uh, justice and mercy fellow yes I love that. yes so oh, and and the lord just opened this door uh for me to be able to lead this congregation mm. and mm. you know what does justice look like when it proceeds from the throne of oh, jesus wow. like, i love what that. does jesus's justice look like i love that. how do we disciple the church into being with Jesus, becoming yeah. like Jesus, and doing what Jesus does wow. among the margins. Wow. Oh, I love that. So, I love that so much. You know, I think it was in 2020, the Lord just whispered into my heart and he said, Duncan, the whole world is looking for justice right now. And right. rightly so. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, but you can't have justice if you're not willing to embrace the judge. Mm. And so of true. course, you know, Everybody wants justice, mm -hmm. but they run away from the judge because yeah. our our minds have been so tainted mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. that the judge is scary, especially when we refer to God. But Absolutely. talk about Jesus and how how he is as the judge. Yeah, I, I would say one of the phrases in our movement, civil righteousness, is Jesus is justice. Come on. You know, wow. we've had so many leaders, even yeah. theologians that uh, in the kind of cacophony of voices mm -hmm. around yeah. justice work. Some leaders just camp out and say, well, you know, we just need to preach Jesus. We need to preach the gospel. We don't need to get into that. Right. But Jesus is justice yeah. because right. Isaiah 42 says, behold my servant, my elect one, upon whom I place my spirit. He will bring justice, justice to, to the, the nations. nations. Wow. It describes yeah. Jesus yeah. as the personification of justice. So wow. one of the things we teach is that justice first is a person. Mm. So when Love you that. hear people mm. say, give me justice, they're saying, I want the person of justice. I want mm. Jesus himself. Right. Mm. So right. what he does. It's it's the the primary work of, you know, if justice is making wrong things right, right. that's what Jesus did. Yes, he came to he did. make wrong things right. But then we say justice is a proclamation. So when mm. you talk wow. about the judge, yeah. the the Hebrew word mishpah, you know, right. it's this it's the the enactment of divine governance wow. or yeah. authority. Wow. Yes. So, wow. So Come on. the foundation of his throne, it yeah. says in Psalm 89, 14, is righteousness, righteousness and, and justice. justice. Mm -hmm. So what he does in righteousness, uh, even the Apostle John saw him in Revelation 19 and says, uh, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And upon it sat one who was faithful mm-hmm. and true. Mm-hmm. And in righteousness, he judges and wow. makes war. Mm-hmm. So he, wow. he brings forth, he makes war on the things that hinder us from love, from love, yeah. from wow. him and wow. loving one another. Hey, that's amazing. You know, and so this, this, uh, we, we say justice is a person. Yes. It's a proclamation. Yes. Yeah. And it's a practice. It's yes. the, wow. it's the way of Jesus. It's loving your neighbor. Mm-hmm. It's, giving yeah. yourselves, spending yourselves on behalf of yes. the poor. It's yes. being poured out Oof. like a drink offering so that mm. his light can break out like the yeah. dawn. And so it's the the practice of walking in the way of Jesus, yes. Yes. doing what he does, going where he goes, yes. and uh, being his hands and feet in the yeah. earth. Goodness. Oh, that's amazing. And I think actually we've been so confused in the body of Christ because mm. like you say, there's been a cacophony of voices and action and like knowing where we stand and position. I think you've just um, brought so much clarity just even in your explanation there about just reversing everything. Um, but I would just love to take you back because you are a man from North Carolina. Come on, you were born North here in Carolina. this state. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. my, it just does my heart Me good too. to see how the Lord has raised you up from this state mm-hmm. that has got a rich history in so many ways. But also, sadly, um, we were involved in, in the slave trade movement. I would love for our viewers just to hear the redemptive story of you, not only your lo- your life, but your generations and you were sharing about your grandmother yes. and great grandmother. Great grandmother. Yeah, my family. So I grew up in it, it's so bizarre to me. Me and my brother kind of laugh. My brother's a worship leader. Yes. And he travels all over the world. Oh, wow. Yes. You know, wow. and, and we just think we, we look at where we came from. Yeah. Like yeah. a no name uh-huh. rural yeah. North Carolina wow. town in western North Carolina. Wow. Rural poverty. Wow. Um, you know, and uh but we had a godly Come on. inheritance. Come on. You know? So good. And so my my great grandparents were traveling evangelists. Oh. Um, oh. And they grew up. So th- this is what's interesting. So the Eastern Band of the Cherokee. Yes. Uh, Indians, mm. indigenous peoples. Um, mm. Of course, they they were forced. They bought 57,000 acres of land in mm. North Carolina. Mm. Wow. And eventually the government wanted that land, you know, among oh. the, the Appalachian Mountains, the Smokies, and especially in northern Georgia, they mm, felt like right. there was gold in those hills. Mm, so they wow. so the government said the best way to get them out of our hair is to forcibly remove them from the land. So the Trail of Tears goes oh. from North Carolina to Oklahoma mm. and they were marched, you know, the Cherokee were marched westward, but a thousand of the Cherokee hid in the mountains of North Carolina and South mm. Carolina and, um, or in Georgia, basically they hid and remained in this area. Well, one of my great, great, I think he's my great, great, great grandfather wow. Wow. was a Cherokee. He was a Cherokee huh. really? and they were wealthy. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so, because obviously they bought 57,000 acres of yes. land. Yeah. But uh, he in upstate South Carolina, just above Spartanburg, South Carolina. Yeah, yep. uh, right in that corner. Right below mm-hmm. in that corner. He bought 300 acres of land Wow. Uh, with another, with a freed slave named Simpson Foster. Wow. And the first thing they did was they planted a church. Wow. Oh. And then they they built the church and they began to, study the word uh-huh. and give themselves like Bereans, you know, like yes. the word of God. Yes. Yeah. Then they built a farm, built houses and started a whole community wow. that they, it, they incorporated. It's called little Africa today. Oh, is what the name of it is. Yeah. It's a town. I'm going to ride my Harley over there and get yes, see you little Africa. See. You gotta see. It's not much to see. <laughs> you just go it's but, in the middle but of the But there's some there. anointing in that there's land. There's anointing yes. in the land. So it's, it's, so he married a, a freed slave. Wow. wow. Um, named Viola. And that's my that's my mother's dad's grandfather. Right. right? Wow. So that's wow. from there. My mother's mom's mother, my great grandmother, wow. was a was ordained by the Christian Methodist Episcopal denomination, wow. the CME, wow. Yeah. Wow. as an evangelist. Wow. And her mother was Cherokee. 
and yeah. her dad was African, so what? she was wow. half Cherokee. So I get it from both. You got a lot of Cherokee, yeah, you a do. lot of Cherokee. Yeah, and, that's amazing. And and the Cherokee had a mo- they were monotheistic. You know, they, right. they believed yeah. in a triune God. They yeah. didn't use the oh. same language. Okay. No, you know, wow. but it, so I feel like I inherited the mm. the kind of supernatural wirings you know right. that that yeah. are native to indigenous the desire yes. for god yes. the desire for god, yes. god relation and sensitivity yeah. connection to the spirit to, to, to the, the land spirit and, and also land. to the land and understanding the mm. import the importance of land and dominion wow absolutely you know? it was like i feel like i inherited that yeah. from the cherokee yeah. side but then also obviously the rich history of the african wow. diaspora yeah. and yeah. you yeah. know the, the enslaved peoples what I just learned about three years ago is uh, that I always thought that the slaves and the Indians were related just through because they were both oppressed. Right. right yes. Through oppression. But yeah. it turns out mm. the Cherokee owned slaves. Mm. And so that's how the cross pollination the, the gotcha. happened yes. in my family. So yes. we were not owned by white people. We were owned by slaves uh, or wow. by, uh, the by indigenous yeah. peoples. Wow. So it's very yes, interesting. Yes, very different. Um, but all that to say, my my great grandmother traveled off through this this uh, Western Carolinas Wonderful. and South Carolina, oh. and uh, churches sprang up, and many of them Love are it. standing today with what a her and my my uh, great grandfather's names in the cornerstone. Amazing. What a what a heritage! Yeah. And you know, um, you have an an amazing story, mm. and mm. you know. What you brought in this conference in Overflow yeah. has blown us all away. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole revelation of the delight of yeah. of God and delighting in God and Him dwelling and being the place and person of delight. Yeah, I, we have to we have to talk about. <laughs> oh, we this have to. Yes. because we're still wrecked, aren't uh-huh. we? Bob? We're still wrecked. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, well, I, I just think in the times in which we live, yeah, there are so many uh, reasons in the natural to be depressed. Mm. Yeah. Like we see almost like this mass, almost epidemic of mm. mental health crises mm-hmm. in yeah. our land yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. Many that are new on the on the kind of the end of covid and mm, just the right. election mm. season yeah, and we're yeah. about to enter into another election season here yeah. Yeah. in in america yeah and so the trauma that so many people mm. are carrying mm. um yeah it is so intense yeah. that even me personally i with what we do with civil righteousness mm. we go into cities where mm. civil unrest is happening where injustice has mm. happened or where perceived injustice has happened mm. and the racial conversation is heavy it's hard yeah. yes. for this yeah. to be your day in and day out. Yeah. You know, I found myself, my I wife, really my imagine. family just yeah. really struggling. Wow. Uh-huh. And we know Jesus. You yes. know, what, yeah. what yeah. happens when you don't? Exactly. No, you know, and so yep. I've had to fight. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so the Lord has been even out of my in my personal journey, just kind of wooing me again mm-hmm. and going, there is a place that you were created for. Mm. In fact, our longing for justice and the groan that we see proceeds from an innate wiring kind of at the DNA level yep. for heaven. Wow. We were all, we were created wow. for paradise. Yeah. Wow. And so the grass to see like justice in a governmental system or to see equity in, in uh, a community, all of that ultimately, even if people who don't know Jesus don't know how to express it in a yeah. godly way or right. you know in a peaceful way. Yeah. At the end, it's all the groans of creation. Wow. Yeah. Longing, longing for heaven. It's yeah. a wow. longing for heaven. Wow. And we all long for the same oh, thing. Wow. Too. Yeah. You we know, do. yeah. We just express it differently and yeah. we act out in different it's ways. Fine. Yeah. We have one groan. We want to mm. go home. We want to go home. Mm. Yeah. The whole earth wants. Yeah. To. That's, That's what it. we want. Mm. Yeah. And so this 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 revelation for me of paradise mm. being paradiso this the the place of delight mm. and and the in, interpretation of the word eden is delight mm. yeah. it's hebrew for delight that was amazing you know in all these years i've never bothered to look no. what does the word eden mean and when you 
said that this mm. morning, sure enough, me being the type of person that I am, I immediately <laughs> looked it, look up it up in my, in my you know, <laughs> strongs and right there and then, mm. there it is. Sure enough, mm. paradise, place mm. of delight. The place of delight. And, it, and so to think we were conceived in the mind of God in delight. Uh, even that, I'm like, so often <laughs> we deal with rejection, self-rejection, mm. you know, maybe... We were born at the wrong time. We were, you know, were conceived in mm. rape. But actually to think, no, you were conceived in delight. Delight. Yeah. You love me that much, God? Come on. Exactly. I mean, it just like, wow, washes over with love. It does. And, and to know, oh, that's <sighs> what I was made in and yeah. made for. Wow. And who by? Delight himself. Delight himself. <laughs> he is delight. And so this is Ooh. this. And Jesus says this in John 17 about himself and the father. He says, uh, uh, this is eternity that they might know me. No. Wow. So knowing him is eternity. Eternity is delight. You know, when we think of heaven, when we think of wow. paradise, yes. yeah. obviously we have hell, the opposite of delight. Right. But but his desire is that wow. we would be with him where he is. Yes. In eternity. Yes. In the place of delight. Wow. So knowing me is is delight. That's mm. just amazing. Mm. And so I'm going, all right, if I have a form of faith or a form of relationship with Jesus, but I don't have delight, mm. do I have Jesus? Mm. Wow. And if I don't. Whatever I have, I, I, if I don't have the light, I need to get rid of this <laughs> and get to the place where I'm experiencing oh, come him on. and knowing that he's delighting in me, that yes. we're, we're living mm -hmm. and accessing a delight as a person yeah. and as a place, as yeah. a real place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, you know, this whole thing of being, you know, the person of delight himself, the eternal God revealed in Jesus creates us in delight mm -hmm. and then creates a garden mm -hmm. as a place called delight and paradise mm -hmm. for us to be in mm -hmm. and then he plants two trees in the middle of the garden mm -hmm. one for us to enjoy so that we can be with him forever and ever the tree of life and then the other tree a completely different tree tell us about that yeah the tree of the knowledge of good and evil mm. Now, God, God wants us to have knowledge. You know, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. yeah. speaks of wisdom yes. and knowledge, you know, yeah. and, and obtaining it. Yeah. But there's there there are two different types of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's I think I, I think of it this way. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the wisdom of man. Right. And the tree of life, which is manna cool you know Come and it's on. it's mm -hmm. it's the it the tree of life sustains us in the dry place the it brings, yeah. it's, it's sustenance it brings mm. us life in the desert mm. of mm. this life mm. yes but mm. the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is sourced in mm. man yeah and it's the wisdom of man's ways right it's it's feeding on the knowledge of man and mm. mankind mm. and it's human secularism it's right it's uh yeah. And it actually leads to death rather than life. Yeah. Wow. And so we see we see it kind of like I, I say kind of like twin towers. Yeah. Mm. And there's this battle in the culture of mm. yeah. of which ideology wins the day. Where is truth? What is truth? Come yeah. on. And now we wow. have this, you know, mass uh, deconstruction that's happening yeah. with people who once tasted delight and lived in the Garden of Delight. Mm. Wow. But the the louder voice and the more tangible and more logical thing for the times we're in is let's mm. let's hear what the uh social media is yeah. saying let's right. hear what yeah. uh, the political pundits are saying about the societal's morality right exactly mm. and so mm -hmm. then the church has become reactive to the tree of knowledge of good and evil yeah. religious morality religious morality yeah. and almost e even i've seen churches that today are one in our city that changed their mission statement uh, to we are a church that exists to uh, we're a praying church that exists to confront progressive culture with the truth of God's word. And I'm like, wow, you're you, 
your mission now is focused on yeah the twin something worldly something worldly like reacting and right. responding yes. to the knowledge of the the tree of good and evil rather, rather than, than delight <laughs> delight in mm. bringing wow. this superior reality yes. to the wow. earth so that not, there's an attraction yeah. over to the tree right. of the not life. not in this defensive yeah. oh well, you know yes. this this tree is winning our day yes. you're wrong we're right right yeah, yeah. right wow. so mm. so how do we how do we mm. begin to to eat from the tree of life mm. come on and that's where we see this this invitation in the book of revelation yeah. come up here Mm. Yeah, come up here. Come on, Isaiah two. In the last days, mm. uh, the mountain of the Lord will be exalted as chief among wow. the hills, wow. and all the nations will wow. stream to it and say, "Come, let us go up to the Lord, yeah. up to the house yes. of the God of Jacob, yeah. and He will teach us." There's the school of knowledge. He will teach us His ways. Right. Yes. So, what if there is a very real, yeah, experiential place? that we're being invited to in the spirit. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. In the last days where we see yeah, knowledge yeah. will increase. Daniel said in the last days, lawlessness will increase. Yeah. Knowledge will increase. People will yeah. run to and fro. We're yeah. getting busier and busier. Yeah. But yet the Lord's like, oh, but there's a house. Wow. And there's a hill that's higher than every other wow. hill. That's right. Wow. There's a mountain. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a hill. It's a no. mountain. Yeah. Everything else is a hill. Yeah. But this is the mountain, mountain. of the Lord. Yeah. And on that mountain is a table, yeah. a feast. Yeah. A feast. Prepared. There we go. A place of delight. Yeah, a place of delight. With the fruits wow. from the garden. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Out of every tribe and nation. Wow. That we're, come, taste, see that the Lord is good. Wow. Wow. I mean, th this mm. is incredible because, mm. you know, we are being forced in, so in society to mm. adopt the world system of morality and pro progressiveness. And, you know, there's like a a standard now for companies that they're yeah. rated. Yeah. Are they inclusive? Are they this, that, mm -hmm. and the other? Then they're rated highly mm -hmm. as opposed to ones that might be, you know, the opposite of that, where they're still standing for some biblical truth. How do we navigate so that we're not reacting, but we can kind of yeah. live in the world, yeah. not be of the world? But how do we practically live with that tension so that we don't become a church that responds reacts and mm -hmm. has our mission statement to go against that how do you feel that we mm. need to behave as individuals and even churches and businesses well that's a great question mm -hmm. one, one of the question. things that i said in uh, my message uh, at the overflow conference was that we sound like where we live mm. we sound like where we come from mm. you know i can tell when i'm talking to you that you probably were not born in America. You, think? you got that right. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, we weren't born in North Carolina. You weren't born oh, in the Carolinas. You oh, ain't got man. the Carolina draw. You know? huh? Oh no, people <laughs> oh, ask him all gosh. the time, "Where are you from?" Right. Yeah, well, you can't tell that I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good impression right there. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and this is a funny side note. When I was in college, I majored in broadcasting and oh, communications. You did? And wow. And I had to, they trained my dialogue, yes. dialect out of me. Because yes. if you're a news anchor in Chicago, yeah. you can't get on, on the news and sound like this. You know? No. Well, tell me well, what, son. Well, they did tonight, a good job of getting yeah. that out of me. Yeah, so. You had so, electrocution lessons, did you? <laughs> That's how we call it in England. Is that what they call it? Like, elocution lessons. Allocution. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, it's interesting in, in light of that, mm. when we, when we listen to mm. the context of the times that we're living in and the, and w how the church is talking about yeah. even yeah. the left or the right yeah. or the yeah. progressive or the liberal or yeah, the conservative, yeah. um, that language of any time we begin to adopt us versus them language, Yep. We've stepped into the language of the world instead of the mm. language of the kingdom. Oh, wow! Because in Christ, there's no us versus them. Right. Yeah. Yes. Like Absolutely. in fact, no, God, Jew Jesus, or one. slave or free. In, there's men there's, or women. Men or women, Nothing not slave nor free. In Christ, not that our 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 ethnicities, our nationalities right. don't go away. Yeah. And He celebrates our unique cultures. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to say, oh well, Jesus is colorblind. No, he's not. No, no I God agree is with not. that one hundred percent. He he uniquely he celebrates. He celebrates. He loves it. Yeah. yeah. He so, loves it. but the truth is, we've started to adopt 
an us versus them worldview, mm, right. mm. even subconsciously, mm. yeah. you know, in, in every circle. I, I navigate yeah. between super liberal yeah. spaces and super conservative yeah. spaces. Yeah. Yeah. I'm orthodox. I'm just trying to follow Jesus, yeah, exactly. you know, the way of yeah. God. Yeah, me too. But, yeah. but what's happened is subconsciously, uh, I think in different spaces, we begin to think that... Yeah. You, it's interesting. Matthew 24 says in the last days, there will be wars and rumors, rumors of war. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some, so many people believe that people who, who vote different than them, worship different than them, think differently from them are actually at war with them. Yeah. Like wow. we've actually started to build structures and theology based yeah. on a rumor of a war that doesn't wow. actually wow. exist. Wow. What an amazing point. And so, so there's this, wow. So, so the enemy's job then becomes, let's make, even though we say we were not against flesh and blood, right? We actually, yeah, in praxis, yeah, walk it out as if it is against flesh. Correct, and blood. because he presses our fear trigger mm-hmm. buttons. Mm-hmm. So now we're reacting out of fear and not love. A- absolutely. Yeah. When Jesus actually died, whoever you perceive your your flesh and blood enemy to me to yeah. be. Yeah. Jesus actually died for them and loves them as oh. zealously yeah. as mm-hmm. he loves you. Absolutely. Like the person Beautiful. who has the great, who's a part of this crazy agenda yeah. that's totally anti-Christ. Yeah. yeah. That's what's so bizarre about I Jesus know. is I that know. he's he like, loves them. I am desperately after you. Wow. I am desperately mm-hmm. for wow. you. And what I fear, what, not fear, what, what concerns me about what I see mm-hmm. in certain circles of the yeah. church mm-hmm. is, is we don't know that kind of love. Yeah, that's like sweet. we 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 react and respond to the ideolog the antichrist ideological yeah. agendas that we see. Yeah, but we don't weep over the individual who's, who's right. in bondage yeah. to that yeah. like yeah that that ideology. Yeah. So we pray against the ideology, but we don't zealously go after the mm-hmm. person. Yeah, mm-hmm. because we we mm-hmm. really mo- most of us are not in proximity to those people. Yeah, yeah. and then when we are. It takes everything within us to like, mm. can, yeah. we, can we love in that space? That's the yeah. test of our maturity. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think that's so good and so well said. And I think that Jesus came and showed us exactly what it looks like to be a human being who lives in that space that you're yeah. talking about. Beca- yeah. And I think where he loves and loved his enemies and even gave his life on the cross. Mm. And Hebrews 12 says, for the joy that was set before him, he, he endured that space. Right. He endured it, scorning its shame. Mm-hmm. And therefore, God's exalted him through it. And I think it's because of what you were talking about at Overflow. I think it's because Jesus lived in the constant uh, experiential revelation of the affections and delight of his father. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And because, and the affirmation of his father, yeah. and because he knew that he was his mm-hmm. father's favorite son mm-hmm. and yeah. that his father loved him as the beloved. Yeah. And he lived centered in that. Yeah. He lived from a place of delight. Yeah. And he lived from a place of being under an open heaven. And there was something that you shared that I want to bring back to you as, in a sense, the answer to Kate's question and this whole situation that we're in in the world that we're in right now where people are so polarized to each Mm -hmm. other Mm -hmm. that this is the place that we can live in and it was from isaiah sorry ezekiel chapter one Mm -hmm. where he talked about i saw heaven opened and visions of god speak into that yeah there's this when we think about how god initiated the prophets of old, mm-hmm. right? Then how he initiates the apostles, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in in the New Testament, we see this consistent pattern mm-hmm. of God bringing them out of the realm of the natural and into the realm of the supernatural, mm-hmm. over and over again, like this yeah. ethereal realm that is yeah. very real and very present yeah. Yeah. in our time. Wow, and he. He, he deals with their their ability to engage the culture or even endure the suffering that yeah. came with the apostolic ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of it was grounded in their uh, the, the establishment of a superior reality Whoa. experientially. Wow. You know, so when when you 
when you're engaging, you're not seeing through the the natural realm, the material world as like the superior reality. Right. Yeah. You're not thinking. You're navigating the material world from an experiential place in the mm. visions of God. Come Ezekiel on. says, I saw heaven open and I was in the visions of God. Wow. Later on in chapter eight, he says, I sat for seven days among the captives. So let's think about this. He sits by the river Kabar among captives. That's like people in chains. Yes. Prisoners or slaves, yeah. Yeah. whatever it were. So he's in a place that's not, it's not like I sat on the, on the, the coast of the river. Uh, right. you know, like I, yeah. I sat. Wasn't sitting and, on the beach. Yeah. No, I oh, wasn't on, in, on in, the park bench. Right. Put a right. in my hand. No, I'm sitting with prisoners. Whoa. In a place of. Exile and exile and and just a terrible place. Mm. Yeah. And while my body was there, my spirit was in the heavens wow. for seven days. And it says I sat there for seven days astounded. Wow. How do wow. you sit in the in the astonishment yes. and the delight and the yeah. beauty of God in the spirit uh -huh. in captivity? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Extraordinary. And then the word of the Lord comes. Yeah. 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 It, it reminds me mm. of Paul in prison, mm. you know, praising yeah. with the chains and yeah. you know, the door breaks open. Yeah, him and Silas. They yeah. were just praising and worshiping mm. God. I mean, yeah. th that's a, a reality that most of us are, are just aspiring and yearning for. Yeah. Because that's the sound of heaven that you're talking about, that's right? That's our citizenship. Wow. We say we're seated with Christ in heavenly place. Uh -huh. But how real is that to yeah. us? How are much we, does our accent betray that? That's Boom. the question. Yeah. That's it. That's our it. Speech. Our speech, our accent. And so you can tell who you've hung around. Wow. Yes. What you sound like. Yes. Like, because I, wow. I'm a chameleon. Like it, when I get around, if I'm spending most of my time around a certain group of people, yeah, yeah. I can't help it. I start picking up on their language. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. start their yeah. lingo. Carrying elements of their culture. Their culture. Yeah. Inside jokes. Like all yeah. those things. Yeah. And when you start to listen to the body of Christ mm. all over different streams and circles, I go, oh, you're mm. hanging around. You're, you're, wow. you're not hanging wow. in the heavens. Wow. You talk about it. Yeah. Wow. You pray like it. You preach wow. like you're in the heavens. Yeah. But in practice, when we're hanging out, the way you're processing our world, you sound like you sound yeah. like her. You sound like her. And also wow. for mm. for those wow. discerners amongst us, there's a smell, there's an atmosphere around people. Whoa. Is it is it a fragrance that brings you joy and peace? Wow. Or does it bring you stress? Amazing. And wow. I think, you know, wow. um you you can sense different atmospheres in the spirit. Right. And you can move from city to city and come back and you feel something different. Or you can be around different people groups mm -hmm. with different ideologies. Mm. And you feel something different, either peace or, right. you know, angst. Right. That's exactly right. Mm. And, and, and it's, it's so, it, it's easy for it to be deceiving because many people who, who have the sound of the earth, mm. but they love Jesus because we're imperfect. Mm. Um, you know, Jesus mm. will still heal. He will yeah. still yeah. save people because, not because of us but because he's jealous for his own name yes. right exactly to vindicate yes. his own his holiness. glory yes. his it's all glory. for his glory so what happens yeah. in some environments that are that are radically off in those areas you know right right um but are preaching jesus and uh -huh. going after healing and these different yeah. things. salvation and healing and miracles are breaking out and so then the deception is oh right. well, we're we politically we're right yeah right. Because exactly you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, morally, we are right because look at all the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That fruit mm -hmm. really has nothing to do with you. No, that's so true. It has everything to do with absolutely his desire to fulfill yeah. his promise yes. to exactly. the nations of the earth. Yes. Wow. You know? As and the flow together, of his anointing, the, there's no, yeah. he's no respecter. He's no respecter. That's right. right. You know, yeah. he'll flow even if our character's not yeah. embedded and, uh, in the right direction. The anointing's never an endorsement it of our is. character. Never, ever. Right. Wow, Pastor JT, what an amazing, amazing just revelation and you know that you're carrying. And and it, it's not just revelation. You are manifesting, representing yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel delight yeah. in wow. just being with you. 
I feel the delight yeah. of Jesus yeah. just being with you. Thank and you. you know, my I'm I'm we're set on fire, aren't we, Dolph? Yeah. And we would love it if you could just set these listeners on yeah. fire. Yes. You know, with with you yeah. know, just to release an impartation. What do you think, Kate? I do. And I just want to highlight something else that you said before mm. you do pray. Right. You said at overflow, you were saying about the prophetic hearing and seeing that obedience and going is actually the fulfillment of what we receive. Can can you share that a little bit? Because I think that might give some of our viewers just understanding of how we apply this. Mm. A- absolutely. I, so many times we encounter Jesus, mm. but it's it stops there. Mm. Like it, now we have a group. We came to the conference. We got encountered. Yeah. Came to church. God met with me. But then what trans what substantial tangible, measurable, transformative power was released that caused you to live differently yes. or, or for things around you to shift because mm-hmm. it came into contact yeah. with you. Wow. And I think wow. the, the point is revival unto reformation, mm. that we become reformers mm. everywhere we walk. Mm. We're carrying this presence of God and the real, the real test of our, um, uh, of the deposit that we've received gets played out in our obedience in day-to-day living. Mm. You wow. know, now yeah. we go in, you've received to now release. It's this flow, Yes. you know? So yes. how do we become uh, ambassadors and vessels in every sphere that we walk into mm. yeah. to where kingdom is being released mm. when we show up, mm. you know? Yeah. Come and on. so Come it's, on. it's seeing and hearing unto speaking and being, you know? Wow. Right? being the hands and feet of Jesus, being an extension of the kingdom wherever we go. And that's the test of our our faith, I think, is where where it it begins to cost us something outside the safety of our Uh worshiping community, of our family. What, yeah. what what is it going to cost us mm-hmm. to, you know in the public arena yeah yeah and so um that, that that's how i'm trying to live and, I love and that's that. my prayer yeah yes. no, that, that's my, i love amazing. it well you know what without the holy spirit's help none of us can do it right but that's with so his true. help we absolutely can do it sure we would love you to just release an impartation over Kate and I over yeah. all of us absolutely. that are watching all of our viewers absolutely. we want you to release that Absolutely. Father, Mm. I thank you. Mm. I thank you for sending your son Mm. to remove the veil. Thank you. Mm. That we might come boldly before the throne of grace. Wow. I'm asking that as your hand came upon Ezekiel and your hand came upon Jeremiah. Yeah. Your hand came upon Isaiah. Would you lay your hand? Wow. Wow. Your hand upon Kate and Duncan. Yes, Lord. And upon the catch the fire movement. Wow. We ask for the strong hand of the Lord. Yes. To lift up this people. Yes, Lord. That they would be caught up in the storyline of God. Mm. That heavenly reality mm. would be their portion. Wow. Yes, Lord. And that they would walk as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Oh. That every place and every person mm. in this family, connected to this family, this mm. tribe, mm. Wow. would walk in divine might, wow. divine mm. boldness, and divine revelation. Wow. Yeah. Lord, I pray for a family of shalom makers on yeah. the earth. Mm, yeah. Mm. For blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called the sons That's it. of God. Of God. Sons of yeah, God. Yeah. So we ask for a family of peacemakers, shalom yes. makers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Carriers mm. of mm. kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Lord. To be released. Mm. Wow. In mm. every place. Mm. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Woo! Wow. Thank you, Holy hey. Spirit. Wow. Gosh. What an amazing <laughs> time. I, I'm getting hit again. You're getting uh, hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation. Thank Glory. you, Lord. 
It's, wow. it's for more than just us. It, yeah. It's for our cities. Yeah. It's for our families. Yeah. It's for our nations. Mm. And, you know, allow the Holy Spirit just to capture you in his mm. delight. Live in his delight. Know that you're a beloved son or yeah. daughter of your heavenly father. Yeah. And know that you've been called to bring Eden, heaven, paradise paradisio wow. to earth wow. in all that you do he's wow. equipped you you're seated with him yeah be blessed as you allow this revelation to go deep i love that kate oh, so good goodness. you know heaven wants to invade earth through you so that all of the world around you wants nothing more than heaven for eternity wow. paradise for eternity with wow. god and you know we can only do that in the love of God. Yeah. And, you know, in the love of God, what would your life look like if you love God, love yourself, love others, have fun and give your life away? Thank you for watching this video today. We hope it blessed your life. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the notifications because we've got some great things that we're going to be sharing with you soon. May God bless you as we go on this journey together.